Hello, this is Greg Allison coming to you from my front yard garden. In fact, this is my now overgrown going to bolt radish bed that I planted here. I'm about to show you some video of me planting my radish. And you can see it's already really run through its season. I'm going to do a little bit of a harvest here for some of these to use for the farmer's market. But where they've gone to bolt, you don't want to use those radishes because uh, when it starts making these uh, flowers and seed pods, especially when it starts growing these little seeds in here, so you get the flowers, and then you get all these little seed pods, and they will fill out like little beans almost. And those make great seeds, and one plant makes lots and lots and lots of seeds. From one seed, you get many. So you can get a return, so you don't have to save your whole bed for seed, to make seed. However, um, what happens is when uh, it starts going to seed, it draws from the bulb, the radish itself, and it starts getting smushy and pithy, and it's not, uh, it's giving nutrients to the formation of the seeds. So then it's not as good to eat. So you want to harvest the ones from which this hasn't happened, or you might just come through and keep them trimmed for a while. It won't work forever, but you can keep them trimmed where they won't do this. Now, the pollinators love all these flowers. I'm not out here while they're out here, but uh, typically I get a lot of little butterflies coming along and eating these things. Now you can see a nice little radish down there. We'll pull this up, and there's a bunch of good ones here, and you can feel it. This one's still hard, so even though it's starting to bolt, it's still good. You know, some things get better when they start to bolt. These radishes are still good. Now, excuse me, may I ask Greg, when do you plant radishes? Well, they do sell. They're quick food, and I do sell them at the farmer's market, but I do plant a lot more than I harvest and use, and the real reason for that is... In organic gardening, I know a trick, and I'm going to share that trick with you. And that trick is that where you grow radishes, you don't get vine borers. I found I couldn't grow squash without using, you know, and I don't use poison. So what happened is my uh, squash got vine borers in it, and it was killing all my squash plants. And I discovered that when you plant radish, uh, it takes care of the vine borers, because vine borers hate beds that grow radish. They just won't live there. And I never had any more problems with vine borers in my, in my squash after that. First one, I tried to grow squash. I tried to grow it here in my front yard where it got too much shade. And guess what? I had mildew problems, so I cleared out in the back to grow stuff. But then the vine borers got me. And then I discovered radish. I took care of that. Now, I got to take care of deer. I'll be showing you a solution for that real soon. But in any event, so I'm about to show you a whole series of videos on a planting of the radish. A lot of you guys are still up north, and it's been too cold, too wet to do anything. So some of you are still in a good season for planting radish. This is year 2019, and uh, of course you can plant it in the fall. And also, uh, you can plant radish. Uh, a lot of you will be seeing this video next year and years after, so this video will be among the resources that I've offered here. And uh, so please, I'm going to show a lot more videos on gardening. So please subscribe to my channel. Click the bell for update notifications and uh, to support my channel. Uh, if you're gardening, gardening organic as I do and doing things to keep your, your garden clean and not have to use chemicals and pesticides, um, the best way to make your fertilizer is worm castings from recycled uh, kitchen scraps, uh, garden clippings, from your food that you're not uh, that you don't eat, uneaten food. So that's the best way to recycle this stuff. It makes the best uh, compost, and you won't need to buy chemical fertilizers and also you can make worm tea and it actually helps control a lot of pests. I will cover that in a video really soon. So uh, I do sell worms, greengregs.com, check the link below. If you want seeds to plant, uh, heirloom seeds is what you need for your garden, check out True Leaf Market below for links to buying seeds, for microgreens, for going indoors, for growing stuff outdoors, and also, uh, hey, food prices are about to really skyrocket. We don't know when it may hit the fan, so it's a good time to buy prepping supplies. Check out my Patriot Supply below, and watch the rest of this video where, as I detail how to plant your radish. And I'll be showing earthway cedars mainly. Oh yeah, one more thing about radish. Everybody knows it's a quick food. It's the quickest vegetable to grow in terms of the radish bulb. What a lot of people don't know, and if you watch my microgreens videos, is you can eat the little greens when they very first start sprouting up. Radish greens are edible. Unfortunately, I do think my deer back here have been watching my video, uh, my YouTube channel with cheer because they discovered 
to the they could eat micro greens I mean uh, radish greens so yeah okay who told them <laughs> anyway so the greens are edible and they're edible from the very beginning so they and the micro green greens come up in just a matter of like three days I mean they're actually edible in about five to seven days five to seven days after you plant them you can have edible greens imagine that so and that's one good reason to have a lot of seed and uh, so just consider that when you're gardening if you're in a survival mode and you got to eat real fast all these beds are now prepared with um, a good addition about a wheel bolt barrel per about a weight 12 foot section of bed of worm castings and some peat moss mixed in to give it a dressing over an inch thick that's a good uh, feeding for the plants to be planted and should last all season I may come back and dust it with some rock dust and other things now you can see this is this is good stuff here it's all mixed up and it's mostly worm castings more than anything so uh, I've got to prepare this bed a little bit for planting. It's too clumpy here. I'm going to smooth it out with this rake. Uh, we didn't till this. We dug the weeds out. I don't do any tilling here. I may use my, I got a big uh, fork I can use to aerate this stuff. But it's, it's just a, it's not a broad fork. So, in any event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through to see schedule sometime is your master when you're planting things. Schedule can be your slave driver. We've had rain, set steady rain, for several weeks out here. And the farmer's market I attempted to go to starts the 15th of April. It's, it's only three weeks away, a little bit less than three weeks. So any radish I plant today won't be ready on that day. So I'm already missed the first day for having radish ready. I'll have some onions, uh, maybe a little lettuce, but I'm just behind for product. Before you run your planter through your beds, you want to break up all these little clods. Now this is literally worm compost, not worm castings. Worm castings would be screened and you wouldn't have all these little clods in it. So worm castings is you know, the better deal. It costs more money, but they're more nutrient rich and they'll save you work. And but the worm castings, worm compost is, is great too. And I use large volumes. What I'm doing here is I'm breaking up these clods before I run the planter through. I'm gonna smooth all this over a little bit, but I'm just trying to use the rake to shatter these guys. You can see a worm over there near that rake. Be gentle over here. I do have a lot of worms in here and that's a good thing. We're breaking these clods up so that we can uh, make it lots easier to run that planter through here. So you don't like hitting things. It likes a smooth bed to run through. The smoother the better. The less trash, the less debris you got in it, the cleaner it is, the easier it is to run a planter. I see I got some other trash out here I'm going to pick up, but uh, that's the idea. I'm going to do some of this with both hands. I'll start pulling this rake. I see there's still some weeds to pull up in here. Anyway, give you a little idea. So got this little earthway planter here. Got the right seed wheel in there. Got French breakfast radish seeds, and these for a raised bed you can plant them up to an inch apart. So I'm gonna make these rows really tight in here where I plant it. Neat thing about radishes, they'll choke out weeds. So I'm just gonna run this thing back and forth a few times. We'll put some real tight patterns in here. There we go. I got a little piece of debris that stopped me, so I got to get that out. You can't do that in film, but you get the idea. The key thing about planting one of these planters is that you have to keep the ground very smooth. Now this ground has got actually a fair bit of debris in front of it. I'm trying to run these rows almost beside each other, a little bit more than an inch apart. But uh, sometimes this debris, especially if it's long like roots and stuff, I try to rake that out. It will. Uh, Sometimes catching a little plow in the front that cuts a little fur if the seeds drop into from the planter. You see that wheel turn? Watch it, I'll let you watch it going back and see how this thing does. What it does is there's a seed hopper there. 
and this little wheel turns and picks up seeds out of this seed hopper. As it picks them up, it's got a hole on the other side that falls down in here and they drop down in the back side of the furrow. And this chain is supposed to cover the little trench up that the furrow makes. And you can see that thing picking up seed. So go. Now I do have a, some logs buried in here in places, so that's going to be a catch if I hit one. A little bit of a snag, I'll just have to work around it because this is a semi-hugelkultur. And these are French breakfast radish. They're very popular farmer's market. Those are a sweeter radish. Me, I like things hot. See, there's one of your, my pieces of wood sticking up from a log buried inside here. So, gives you an idea. It's hard. Sometimes you need three hands when you're using the camera. No, no. Sometimes about it, three hands would come in very handy. Handy hands, ha. <laughs> but anyway, so this is pretty simple. It's back and forth, back and forth. Lots of tight rows because radishes can grow tight. I actually plan to hand throw a little bit of collards right here on the edge on the side. It's a little late for planting them. They grow. I'm going to actually plant tomatoes in this bed. I could have done carrots maybe. Carrots and tomatoes go well together. I might, but you know, it's getting a little late to plant those kind of crops here in Alabama. There we go. I think that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to switch over to collards. Hand throwing seeds is a bit tricky. You know, that's actually really thick when I'm putting in there. So I'll try to move along fast and just drop a little bit. Just drop them on the edge where it didn't run that uh, planter. Just got a handful here. I think this handful is going to make it all the way to the end. Or almost, see? Oops, that's more than I need to throw down. Oh, that was perfect. Well, those hand sowed seeds, seeds were uh, planted a little thick, so what I'm going to do, I don't want to rake them in because they're all just on the surface. So some of them might germinate. Those seeds are also about a year old. So I don't know if any of them will germinate. So this is just a little experiment. What the year old collard seeds that weren't frozen like I should have done do? Well, we'll find out. A lot of gardening is experimenting. Unless you're one of these guys that buys new seeds all the time. Or one of these people telling me there's nothing to learn about gardening, it's easy. Well, there's always something to learn. So when you're using old seeds, maybe you plant them a little thicker. You know, some seeds in nature can survive hundreds, even thousands of years. Some seeds aren't worth a hoot after a year. So how do you know what's what in that regard? There are skills to be learned, knowledge to be obtained. They're all directly applicable to gardening. So the good thing is, this bed is now planted. It took a lot more time to prepare it than it did to plant it. This bed is probably maybe 30 foot long. It's a good long bed here. That should make some nice French breakfast radish and maybe a few collards and we'll plant tomatoes in here later. Pretty soon. You can see a garden in my front yard. This is the front of my house. I even grow stuff up the side of my house. That'll be rattlesnake beans. <coughs> and have a green, uh oh, not my sneeze and not my cedar. Hmm. I see there's a lot of radish seed in there. I'll come back and pick that up a little bit. So, uh, and I will prepare my front yard and garden in it some more, but I got trees up here and it kind of limits how much I can do. But here's the truth. There are 47 million acres of lawns in North America. If you work like the Dervais family in uh, Pasadena, California, 
and are able they are able to uh, support four adults everything they eat except grain products and sell growing off just a tenth of an acre a tenth of an acre everything four adults eat plus they sell it and make a living off of it and they buy whatever grain products they need from that so here's the deal we actually need to eat less grain in our world anyway all the carbs are bad for you unless you're really doing some heavy 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 work and especially when they got all the chemicals in them that we typically get these days so the thing is 47 million acres of lawns if you do the math and break it down to a tenth of an acre each that's uh, 470 million tenths of an acre then if you think about taking that and uh, figuring support four adults on it you know we're talking about a couple billion adults we're talking about you know today's world's population about seven billion you could feed over a quarter of the world's population today over a quarter almost a third actually if you do it right maybe even a half of the world's population today off the lawns of North America just our lawns and here's the fact if everybody grew on their lawns if the towns and the factories if you had gardens on the roofs and the shops and factories and towns there would be no food deserts the cities would almost be self-sustainable the the it, it's the fan apocalypse would not have to be such a crazy event where everybody's going zombie mode looking for food so if we can get more people into growing knowing and growing then our problems diminish considerably besides that lawns are nothing but a waste anyway I think lawns are profane so um, you notice I do nothing for my lawn even though I sell stuff that people put in their lawns warm tea yeah, it makes your lawn grow but I care not about lawns I park my equipment I drive on them I got these trees I do everything I can to kill the grass just so I don't have to mow it but mowing takes time takes energy and it's just, just exercise and vanity they just don't resonate with me you know some of you might like that a uh, lawn can be a pretty thing I, I grant you that but when you can eat out of it it'd be prettier too and there's plenty of vegetable gardens that look real nice and beautiful real artistic if you got time to do that I highly encourage you you're actually doing a lot more for the world we live in today than you would be if you were just out growing uh, grass so that's my little two cents worth on growing grass and American Lawns, the you know, like homeowners associations and cities that really fight you doing this, I think we ought to rebel against them. And people ought to stand up and do it anyway and fight them. Because this is how you should be using your lawn. Just like this. Because it does you a lot more good. Ultimately, your community a lot more good. Makes it more sustainable, more survivable. You're not burning up a bunch of fuel, just to mow a yard, spraying all the chemicals much 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 better to grow this will be real pretty real soon especially when i got all them vines climbing upside the house it's a real pretty thing and off my front porch it's beautiful now i do need to mow my yard or do something with it or pile it up but anyway i'm pretty busy though that said 47 million acres feed a good chunk of the world's population just out of north america more than north america we couldn't export the thing is that if you take every community and they did that where they're at they could take care of themselves I, I, I support local food so you know you don't need to actually grow in your entire lawns to feed North America that's more than we have people here so there you go feed from the lawns it's a great idea uh, try it out yeah look at these French breakfast radish those are sweet radish so this is uh, what you get in the end this is the fruit of your labor is the harvest just go down here and look for the radish you can see the bulbs sticking above the ground and pull those up These are probably Easter egg radishes here. Look at those. See, aren't they pretty? Those pretty radishes. Just go ahead and look where the bulbs are nice and big and just pull them up. 
got them mixed and somehow the Easter eggs and the others got all mixed up. I'm kind of looking to make sure it hasn't gone to bolt before I pull the plant. Those ones that go to bolt are making seed. They're not going to have good firm radish bulbs on them. Look at those. Aren't those pretty? And uh, those will be at the farmer's market tomorrow. So if you're at the Madison City Farmer's Market, you might find those. And you might buy and eat these radishes. Imagine that. You can go buy and eat what I'm pulling up right now. And if you're watching this video later, well, check me out at subsequent times at the market. And they have a website. Maybe some weeks I'm not there. There's a website for the Madison City Farmers Market to tell you who's going to be there, when they're going to be there. So be there if you're in a local area. There's just a lot of really good fresh vegetables available at the Madison City Farmers Market. It's a great market. A lot of great vendors. You can get fresh uh, meats and all kind of things. I'm going to do a video on that. It's called Lamb's Quarter. A lot of edible weeds. A lot of people just don't know about. Oh, Greg, I can't eat. I'm starving to death. Watch my channel. And don't starve. Alrighty. Look at those. 